Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, please re like ignore this microphone right here, but the last few times I've recorded, the audio hasn't been as crisp as I would like it to be, so we're gonna have this here. <laughs> I decided that I want to do an oil painting. I haven't done one in a hot minute just because they're a little time consuming, you know, whatever. Um, but I was kind of inspired to get back into it because I've been seeing so many YouTube videos in my recommended feed recently of people trying it for the first time, but they're not really, they don't really know what they're doing because, I mean, it's their first time doing it. <laughs> the average self-taught artist is usually very overwhelmed, very intimidated by the oil painting process. Um, the only reason I know anything about oil painting is because I went to college for art and I took a lot of painting classes. I just want other people to experience just how amazing working with oil paints can be and I was like you know what I have a lot of just like knowledge about oil painting just like sitting up here getting dusty why not make a YouTube video about it. So in this video I'm going to be talking about how to prep for a painting. Alright so first things first your canvas. What are you going to be painting on? Really you can paint on anything you want. Uh, we have canvas panels, stretch canvas obviously, there's even if you want a cheaper option just to get used to oil paintings before you jump onto the, you know, an expensive stretch canvas or canvas panel. I really recommend getting a uh, canvas like sheet. So this so this is one this one is made for acrylic uh, paints. It's just like a canvas texture paper. Uh, it's gonna be a lot cheaper, but like I said, this one's for acrylic, but they do have ones for oil. Um, so I definitely recommend getting some of this. You can cut in little bits, just practice doing like painting an eye or painting a hand, you know, or just doing a sunset, whatever is gonna kind of get you more comfortable before you jump into a big canvas. You know what I mean? Uh, something people love to paint on with oils is glass and wood and fabric. Now if you're painting on fabric or wood, you definitely need to prime your surface first because wood and fabric are porous. They're just gonna soak the oils out of your paint. It's gonna make it dry a little bit faster. And honestly, if you're using oils, you don't want it to dry fast. You want it to have that slow dry so that you can continually work and blend out your colors, right? If you wanted it to dry slow, you would be using acrylic. Um, so the, the wood's just gonna absorb those oils, it's gonna s absorb the pigment over time, and so you want to prime it. Now you might thinking, be thinking like, oh, well, I don't want to paint and prime my wood white. Like what's the point of painting on wood if I'm just gonna prime it in white and then you don't even get to see that it's wood, I might as well just be doing canvas. Now there are actually, there's actually a such thing as clear gesso. A gesso is like paint primer that you would use on like your house wall but it's like it's a primer for like paint like artist paint that clear gesso is going to do everything you need the paint's going to lay on top of it nice it's going to be a barrier between the wood and the oil paint um but it's clear so you'll be able to see the the grain of the wood or if you're on fabric you definitely want to do a primer on top of fabric um so if you are using a pattern fabric and you still want that pattern to show through, put a nice layer of clear gesso on there and then you can start oil painting, no problem. Now for this video, I'm going to be using a stretched canvas. Um, and from my perspective, a little pro tip of working in an art gallery for almost two years, uh, something that will curators will really like get upset about and it might cause your piece to be eliminated um, or to be kind of put in the back where it's not seen as much. Something, a big thing is when on your canvas, here I'm going to pull my canvas down real quick. On your canvas you have the front here and then you have this edge right here on the edge of your canvas. A lot of people just leave it white. You paint here and but when you're in a gallery this is visible. When your art, if your art is in a fine art gallery, the whole thing is 
to be looked at. So I have three options for you on what to do with this edge to make it look more put together, to make it look more professional, and for the curators at the gallery to like it. So here's an oil painting I did when I was back in school. Now the first option, and I think what people enjoy the most, is when the painting flows over onto the edge. There's this overflow of the painting. The next option is something that most people do. I think it's probably one of the most common ones you'll see. And that's just to paint it black. Just do a black border around it. It's not the, this isn't <laughs> my best example. I don't do the black border as often. I don't know, I'm just kind of like, I don't know. It's not my favorite look and I'll show you what I do to combat because I don't like the black border. I feel like it makes everything look a little bit smaller. It's like tighter, it's a little more restricting. I prefer an airier, lighter look. So I'll show you what I do to my borders most of the time. So my favorite thing to do my borders is get painter's tape, lay it down on the edge and then let it overlap. I'll just do one edge at a time so that I get this white border around my painting. This one's pretty big. <laughs> and then every now and then, you let little bits of it go past the border, and it's just a nice feature. I really like this because it's reminiscent of when you have a photograph or a drawing and you frame it and you end up matting it with like a white mat. So it's like that, but directly on the painting. It's a part of the painting. Now, sadly, even though I hyped up that whole edging out your oil paintings, um, the canvas I'm going to be using today is an oval, and I feel like doing that border on an oval is going to be hard. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to do the black edge for this canvas. So let's talk about the sketch. When you're sketching out your idea onto the canvas, there's a couple things you can do. I see a lot of people, you know, you just use pencil. Cool. Or charcoal. I see a lot of people do their pre-sketches, their pre-painting in charcoal. I mean, these are all, graphite and charcoal are cool. They can kind of mix into the paints, which can definitely be a look, it can be a statement. If that's something you want, um, go for it. Um, I think for the most part, I use colored pencil to do my pre-sketch because it's colored rather than being like a black kind of based or gray like graphite kind of color. Um, it's not gonna like pop out, you know, into the oil painting. The oil painting will sit on top of- I honestly think for the most part I've done most of my sketches in colored pencil and that's probably what I'm gonna do for this one. Uh, one of the biggest and most common ways to do a pre-sketch is with the paint. You paint your sketch. Paint a pre-painting, I guess. Is <laughs> underpainting is what it's called. Uh, the old masters, this is what they would do and stuff. Well, a lot of times they would do charcoal and then they would go over that charcoal or graphite with um, their pre-painting, which is just like you find a brown shade that you enjoy, a lot of times it's raw umber or um, Van Dyke brown, one of those colors. You're <laughs> Daisy, you're going to take that color, it doesn't have to be a brown, it can be whatever color you want. Um, you're going to dilute it, usually with odorless mineral spirits, so you'll just dilute it a little bit and just get it on your paintbrush and you just kind of sketch out your composition right on your canvas with your diluted paint. Um, and because it's diluted, it's not going to take three days, to four days to dry. It's going to be drying probably an hour or two. And then you can start painting on top of that and getting more detailed with each layer, getting more and more detail into your painting. That is assuming you want to do a realism painting. None of these um, tips and stuff I'm giving you are meant to restrict you. They're meant to open up possibilities and then you can then, as you get comfortable with the medium and these techniques, stray from them however you like. All right, so I kinda wanted to show you some of my pre-sketches in my sketchbook here. 
some of the things I was looking at, I ended up settling on this yellow sketch here in the corner. Um, it's based off of a photograph I took of my friend and her sister a few years ago, maybe four or five years now. Uh, I just really liked the photo and I was like, you know what? I think it would make a great painting. So uh, here I just kind of roughly put in some proportions just so that I knew everything was kind of framed up on the canvas how I would like it before I started getting too many details. But once I was happy with my overall um, kind of composition I was leaning towards, I went ahead and started putting in details. Now, I didn't focus too much on capturing the likeness of my friend and her sister in the photograph. I was just kind of using them for basic proportions, um, more or less just being inspired by their faces and less worrying myself with making it look exactly like them. I don't know. You know what I mean. Um, something I like about this is that, uh, this painting, since it's on the oval and both faces are kind of going different direction, this painting is going to be viewable kind of in the round, um, so it can be hung from almost any side. <laughs> so that's what it looked like after, uh, my first... Uh, kind of like going at it and putting in details, but I wanted to go in with an even darker pencil and really hash out um, the fine details Just so that when I'm painting I don't get confused um, In the past I haven't always put this much work into the pre sketch But it's been a while since I've done a painting. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little nervous about getting started so I just wanted to do as much preliminary work as I could to make sure it turned out as good as it possibly can. And then I even go in and I start kind of shading in some areas just so that um, I kind of have an idea already where a lot of those shadows are going to be. Once again, I'm just doing more work than necessary to make sure I get the results I want. So you can <laughs> enjoy these montages of me just coloring. <laughs> As you can see, I always have that photograph up on my computer. I can zoom in and rotate the photo just to help me whenever I need to, to get the details out. And here is how my sketch turned out. I don't plan on putting any more details in there and everything else I can do in paint. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I know that this video had a lot of information in it and it's a little bit of an overload. If you're interested in seeing how this painting is going to turn out, go ahead and subscribe because I think next week or maybe the week after because, you know, oil paintings take a long time, I'll probably be doing a speed paint of this while doing some, like, chit-chat, like, story time or something over top of it or something. I don't know. So with all that being said, see you guys next week.